beautiful, beloved avatar Mayor Baba. Lord, the Lord, it's the compassion of our, our precious beloved, our darling, our real friend, our constant companion, the one that always cares for all of his lovers, that loves all of his lovers equally. And yesterday, my beautiful God, mi amor, that means my love, of course, the only love that I care for. I was thinking about what you said. I was so stunned by it. And you said in one of your couplets, I dare care not for my lovers. That's what you said. I dare care not for my lovers. What does that mean? That you don't dare live in us alone. That you don't dare do anything against us. That you don't dare abandon us. That you will do anything for us. I never in my life imagined anything like that would ever happen to such a holy servant person. But you said, unfortunately for me, so I am. Thank you, beautiful mama. I want to backtrack a little bit. So when we picked up Alaba at the airport, there was a couple of us. And all of us, a couple of people that were not Bible lovers at the time, I met them quite a few times. Their name was the Rubensteins, or Rubensteins, and I forgot to mention that in the last talk. And they came through Baba, through all of us, meow, 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 because he just loved cats. And the other person that I remember again, her name, was the lady, the miracle thing that all of us, made happen because you actually made it happen, Baba, but all of it had to be the source and here is in America, so you gotta help him out some, you know? And uh, her name was Laura Smith. And that thing happened overnight. Um, on the airplane now, Baba. Taking a chance that I cannot come back to India. And I feel not too happy about it because I know you're the do it over all and all that. I just, but it wasn't like gambling for me. It was what I did call the conviction that you are the do it over all and somehow will make it back. But that somehow I didn't live up to it. Guarantee. But we went. We arrived in Mexico City. Oh, this is the fun part. There's going to be so much glories in it. So many beautiful trips that happen. And because this is going to be laughter and joy for at least a half hour, Baba. In any case, we arrive at the airport. And there's only Arsenio Rodriguez and his wife, Yolanda at the time, and Rafael Biafane with his wife, Lourdes. And so we went towards Alba's house. And then he says, Tony Grease, come over here, I want to talk to you. And all of a sudden I got the scolding of my life. Why did he come here? Only two Baba lovers, this and that and that, and we have to travel all up for only two people. I says, Alba, it isn't my fault. They helped me out a great deal with expense. You should be grateful that you're here, so please don't give me any complaints because I'm gonna follow every step that you broke already. And look, the monthly never said that you should go to McDonald's and have meetings at McDonald's. That is so erroneous to do in this country, but that was, instead of going to people's houses, when they prepare these beautiful dishes, you went about the opposite. And you drove me freaking nuts all about. But that's you, darling, because you are the darling of the beloved. I'm not. Maybe somewhere on the back line. In any case, I get this call. Now, Rafael is a little bit, what is he going to do in Mexico? So he's going to gather some of his friends in his house. These are the well-to-do. And with all of, when uh, Rafael was a young boy, he had a catechism teacher. Catechism means they read like the Bible or something book like that, the cat, 
catechism, and that they grew out only in Mexico. They teach all the people about Christ and that through the catechism, and they always have a mentor for that. So we have to go all the way to the Villa de Guadalupe, where the big basilica is, and nearby there's a lady, and her name is Maria. I don't remember her name. We went into her house, and it was such a beautiful house. And all about went there with us, huh? and there were icons of the Virgin and Jesus and the apostles and nativity scene. And there wasn't even time for the nativity. And, the, and she had it all arranged the Christian way. And she was a lover of the Virgin of Guadalupe. And all of us are stunned. She walks around and reviews. Every multi, I mean statue, looks and looks and looks and, and pictures of Jesus and that and all of that. And, and, and he's just wandering in the days for a while. He didn't say much of a word then because we went to invite her to come to one of the gatherings. So that created a great thing. This is the first person that we saw in Mexico City. But the story doesn't end here with it. In any case, there's a group of friends at Raphael's house a couple of days later, or day, the day, or the next day, because he did everything like this, you know? And, uh, but for me, the fragments of time are not in my memory quite well. And uh, so his friends gather, because it's during the weekend, and he begins to tell about some of the dreams that he had were between Iran and this and that one and this and that. And then he gets on the ground and begins to roll around the whole ground, you know. And here's all these people that first talk about Mary Bowen, some guy rolling on the ground. My gosh. But, as usual, he flipped his coin, not this time, but when he was at Samadhi. And he said he was not going to obey any of the rules. So the friends are, Raphael are perplexed. But the, the lady Maria, she was not perplexed. She was just watching something. Okay. The meeting ended, you know, and they had a few soda pops or punch and a little cake and everybody went in their own way. So this is Sunday. So what am I going to do with all about you on the Sunday? I know for a fact I've got to go face the music on Monday. And I can't tell all about what I'm doing, that he doesn't have a double entry visa. So we we'll go to sightseeing in the big Castillo de Chapultepec with the seven heroes that fought the French and this and that. But he likes where the children hang out. And at that time, it's not developed like it is today. So they had the little train, you know, that goes choo-choo and a bunch of children. So he sits there, you know, uh, on the back. They say, then we go choo-choo, choo-choo, and go around run the park. And all of us in love with the choo-choo train. He gets off and he tells the conductor of the train, you know, man, up there, probably not too much means. I can even, in Mexico, how much can you make? He says, you will certainly own your own locomotive. This is not the first one, but you would be the owner of a real locomotive for passengers. And I'm not in shock, but I'm still stunned at his ventures. Then he tells, so he wants some ice cream, you know, an ice cream and we all have a scream and this and that, and, and then this and that, and then, and then he, he, he sees the Big Mac sign. And it's hot. So we have a beautiful lunch, some hamburgers, french fries, and, uh, uh, you know, just the whole lunch thing. And then we continue to walk around the park and go sightseeing to the zoo when he remembers Baba's elephant named Sumitra, that she was, you know, Baba's elephant when the, when the early days when we used to go to Puna. And she saw us coming with Joel, your brother Joel. There, Sumitra would get up on her two legs and he'd go, Mah! and she would greet us. And then the bananas, we, you know, 
Jao to get a ton of bananas and we feed her and she was so amiable. And but the bananas were not given to her as an animal. It was Baba's prasad. So she gently took one by one, as if she knew that God was coming to give that to his elephant, Sumitra, with the most beautiful eyes that I've ever seen in my life. Not even any human had those besides Mira and Money. And uh, she was just luminous and wonderful. And then when we departed, she get on this hind again and it goes, oh, 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 seven times. And I go, wow, because I'm very observative. Anyhow. Went to the zoo, and then, then we went to uh, to Arsenio's house, and that's how we passed the evening, right? And then the next morning, oh, okay, so I tell Rafael, because I told Rafael, I don't know if I told you this, that I didn't have a visa to go back to the, into Colorado, because that was uh, our next uh, objective. I wouldn't bear it so. In any case, so I don't know what to do, except that I know that I have to go to the American Embassy. And uh, so I tell Rafael and they're saying, What do you have that that mentions all of us name? So they know that it's a very important person. So we get the Ramju diaries. Arsenio has the Ramju diaries. And there's a Globe magazine, and uh, then I have a book with all about, I don't think it's mentioned there, it's by Anthony Hopkins. I think it's called Much Silence, Father. So I have this information to give to the big council of the big wig, because I can just go to any ordinary person. I have to go see the, the head of the council. This is a story that's really good. Okay. So I see the consulate and says, sir, is against our policy to give Iranians a visa to enter the U.S. from Mexico or most places because we are in the midst of a conflict with Iran. So it's not granted. And that's what I have. So what am I going to do? I get the word from the big council and I said, Rafael, Rafael, you know, I, I don't have my act together, brother. You know, really, I don't. So do, if, do me something. Go somewhere and buy me a box of territons and give me two bottles of liquor. Go chew. Don't say anything to all of us because you don't like anybody smoking around them. And if you drink, my God, you're cursed by the devil. So all of us think so. And it tells you that, so that is harmful for you, and this and that. It gives you a whole bit to work about it. Uh, there are funny stories about that coming. In any case, I, and I talk to you getting drunk every night, Baba, but I know I have to be up by 5 o'clock or 6 for his tea. So I don't drink too much, but I, you know, I'm not a drinker, Baba. To begin with, I have one drink and I feel already wussy, really bad, but by one drink, I can't have one drink. So I shoot for three. How's that? Three and a half and three and a half. I can't even walk, Baba. But I have to do them puff, 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 thinking there, you know, with those terrifons. And Rafael had to bring me an ashtray and put me like in one of the, the basement type of a place away from Alabama. So where's Tony Grace? Oh, he's already went to sleep, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know. They buttered that up. That's what I feel sounds. He had a beautiful house uh, with a waterfall on it and humongous, and he's got a ranch on top of that where he breeds horses. And he had 260 race horses. And some of them he took to the Kentucky Derby. The guy's a multi but I'll get to that story. In any case, I go through this whole thing 
for a whole week and refusal, refusal, refusal. I'm trying to convince this guy that because he's never seen now about that, you know, see, please read the the literature so I can disappoint all these people. Here's her itinerary and so on and so forth. From there we fly to California and then we go to San Francisco to see the, the well, I didn't tell the Sufi did, so I'm going every day, every day, every day. Oh my God. Refusal after refusal, and the man is just about tired to see me. And he tells me, please don't come back again because I have nothing, no power to give you that. I would like to. You say he's an auspicious man, but it's against rules and regulations. So I must say, think it's better. I'm better. So the next day we go to the ranch, and of course they had the whole entire village. There wasn't composed of a lot of people, about sixty-seven, maybe eighty, the most. With some veterinarian, he had stables, you know, and Ludes and uh, his sister. Uh, uh, I think we're naming it on a minute, you know. Uh, they wore the boots and the this and that, like with equestrians and the hats, and they went on these horses. And they went to show all about all these uh, horses and, uh, in, uh, and the hundreds of acres of land that he grew something called Avena in Mexico. And it's food grain for the horses. And uh, everybody and Lourdes would get up because we had a table for 20 people. It was a royal hacienda from the rich man. And she go, pop, pop, like this. And then the maids, five or six of them, and, you know, one of them came running to her. And because that's how she had to express herself because she had so much stuff. And bring this, and bring the molly, and this taco, this, and this, and that. And all this hand prepared on the village. Oh my God, I was like gloating on just everything, you know. And, and I didn't realize the extreme wealth of but how can anybody have 260 horses? And then after they arrive in the U.S. and fly in by helicopter to the Kentucky Derby? Who is this? Okay. So he's got a driver. His name is Memo. That means William, but a Mexican, adorable Mexican style is Memo. Not Guillermo, but Memo. And Memo likes to puff in the smokes. And all of us say, Sir! Memo, what are you doing? Oh, I'm having my cigarette break. He says, From today on, you never smoke a cigarette. You take Baba Sleep 150 times, 10 times daily. And you will lose the desire to smoke. Because it's a bad habit and it's a an dangerous habit and people don't like it. What's Memo going to do? Probably not. But he does it the next day. The desire of smoking leaves. Then, what now? Huh? So I asked Memo for a cigarette somewhere. Well, oh, no, I quit smoking. You know, the method really works. Okay. So then the weekend comes again, and I'm already, God knows how late going in, but I contacted Winnie Barrett and the Californians to rearrange, and I would let them know when I'm coming, and so on and so forth, because I know there is no hope, but I'm going to give it one more shot. So then one day we go to the uh, Hipódromo de las Americas. It means the racetrack. And Rafael has got a horse, a baby horse, in training named Maharashtra. But prior to that, we go to the Villa de Guadalupe. Not to see the lady, Maria, but uh, to see the festivities and the Indians dancing, you know, the, because somehow the holidays on hundreds of tens of thousands and, the, the, uh, and it, uh, you know, and all this. And Alaba tells me, Tony, because it already doesn't gonna happen yet, but it's gonna happen pretty soon. I had a dream that I was walking in a street paved with gold, 
And then instead of raining rain, it rained gold. And I picked it up and I picked it up and I picked it up. And I said, that money is going to go for merit power statue in Kota, in Hamirpur. And finish up his, uh, what they call it, temple, your mandir. Because we just came from a few other places. Trump, I didn't do the Iranian back because there are no Iranian there. So, you know? And uh, so now all of us have this dream. So he says, uh, he asked me about where we're going. I said, well, we got to go see uh, uh, Winnie Barrett and the people in this. I'm not telling him that, that. But he predicts over there. Raphael, after his dream, because it all deals with money, Raphael put Maharashtra on the next race. Uh, she's not even in trend, just baby horse for training, not like the other ones that have already been trained to run in the racetrack. And they said, they will certainly will win. And you bet all this money on Maharashtra, and you send me half to the one destination, and you keep the other half to yourself. Raphael believes it. And I do too. Because I'm a dumb dumb. So the time comes. Maharashtra runs. We're not there, but we're looking at all the horses running and so on and so forth. You know, it's a special day during the weekend. And the place was Hipodromo de las Americas. It means, it means that it was a, like a race horse track of many Americas and everything like that. And we're watching this and all of us is the people betting on their horses and, and the announcer did they they really go a million miles an hour and blah 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 blah. He's having the blast of his life. I mean, all of us is really happy, except why I'm not there. And then again, we start visiting all Raphael's house. And when we arrive there, he looks at every house and he says, there's no light in this house. This house lives in the darkness like Laura's. That's because you don't have a picture of Mary Baba. These people never heard Mary Baba, except on rolling the ground, all the millionaires. So, there's a marking place somewhere. Instead of a pen, he puts a big cross on those white wash walls when there's no picture. And he says, you put a picture of Mary Bob immediately and the light will be brilliant in this house and God's presence will come. And that is a sure thing to do. Don't live in the darkness because the hell houses are dark because Mary Bob is not present there. So immediately do this. House after house after house, he does the same trick. You can't stop him. And these are million dollar homes in Mexico, in La Colonia Polanco, in, in the fancy colonies. Uh, I'll think of a name of a few before I finish this. Oh, Las Lomas de Chapultepec. That means the Lomas, you know, that's the highest, like 50 times more than a villa. And with everywhere that you go, they're restricted police. Every two, three blocks, they lift you up. Who are you? This and that. Because it's a lot of crime in Mexico. He's thrilled to death. And then we go to Rafael Villafuena's mama's house because her father had expired. I had never seen a house till today, Baba, and I tell you honestly, not even in the movies. There was a big fountain. All of us with us. He's witness to all of this. A fountain in the middle of a house, and every room had a handmade carpet, and the rooms were not small, Baba. They were like about 20 feet long or 25 by about 16 wide. I've never seen any room that size ever. First time, room after room after room, and then there's staircase like this, and there's her quarters up there through the mansion. We have lunch with servants, you know. Very amiable and beautiful lady, you know. I mean, 
She was Raphael Olson. You know, of course, he was related to the movie star Jose Ferrer. That was his own color. And he's, you know, he's got the wife, the, the granddaughter of the president of Mexico. God knows what goes on in the planet, so they're getting married. And it's not my business, but I'm enjoying it because of the feasting that I'm doing for nothing. And the drunks that I pull out now full of stress. And I can't say nothing to a lot of Comes, and every day I still go check the line. See if by a miracle this guy changed his mind. I got to stand in front of 300 people at 10 o'clock when they open up the Mexican embassy. And, and they, they, I see no passwords, and everybody goes through it, through it, through it. They, uh, their password means, oh no, no, there's no password, Mr. Ali Shakurzam and all of that. I get it. That. So tired, Baba. Standing in line in the middle of the heat. That was the old days. I don't know how it is today. Part of the job. So then I called Alaba. First, I had a meeting with Rafael Anderson. I said, listen, man, this is getting a desperate situation. And uh, what I have to do is leave the country. So I won't be able to keep up with appointments. And uh, I don't know how we're going to reform some of that money because we already spent it on this and that and the other, you know. Yeah, but uh, most of it's still intact, different groups. And uh, so I says, well, I have to shell it out. So Rafael says, don't worry about it, take care of it. Okay. So the last chance. So Rafael, myself, and Arsenio, we get all dressed up really nice. They have the nice clothes, you know, I got decent clothes. We go up there, we head to the embassy. When we arrive somewhere on the embassy, there's a guy out there on a derby hat with a big, uh, what do you call those, walking canes with the silver tips. And he's selling lottery tickets. There's many he has right in here, hanging from his nice suit you know lottery 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 loteria loteria and it all about says this is the lottery tells do this do this buy the tickets from the man all of them and we will surely become rich and you send tony the money half of it for my next destination and you keep the rest what is lourdes gonna do but buy all the tickets I don't know how many hundreds of dollars. I'm talking about peso. I don't know how much you spend, but they have the bucks. Buy sold the tickets. So Maharashtra, she's not trying to run, so she falls. I give me informed of this in Colorado, and she breaks her leg. The lottery man, there was no lottery one, not even five cents. So that's the way he went, the yin yang. But it was incredible, because I'm ready to hear from Rafael if we want these things, you know, nothing. So what's gonna happen to the Ngota? But Alaba is very clever. So as soon as we arrive in Colorado, he says, Tony, go and make me 500 pictures of Mayor Baba. Where Alaba is embracing Baba. It's a very popular photo. Hugging his legs, you know, he's pretty youngish, you know. And now uh, Bob is just uh, sitting there by a tree. I have that picture, something to that effect, you know, black and white type of picture. And uh, so it makes me go, make comes of copies. So I get the photographs, the real things printed up, but you know, my budget, I can't be using somebody else's monies. But here's what happens before we get there. Anyhow. That's when, you know, the derby man, we're going to the embassy to plead for the, for the last time with Raphael, because he's a very notorious person, I suppose. And Arsenio works for the United Nations. So we go out there and ask for Mr. So-and-so, I forgot what his name was, you know. And he says, um, uh, we call for them and he comes down. And Raphael begins, I am Raphael Biafani, and, and uh, I'm so-and-so, and, -so, and uh, this is my wife, Luther. She gives her the, she says, I don't give a damn who you are, sir. 
You could be the president of Mexico and I still wouldn't give you a visa. Arsenios, John, he just basically says, I'm going to put the name in there. But he not really knew what the reply was going to be. And then he says, leave. And by the way, he goes out there and there's all of us standing in this clean suit. Not the dusty one. With a power pin in here. So he looks at all of up and down for a few minutes. And he walks down to, to his office and he turns around. And he says, you know what? I just got transferred to New Delhi. To the embassy in New Delhi. I got to leave immediately. <laughs> Who can do that? Only Bob. I think I just got to leave immediately. So he says, no, no I'm not giving him a visa. And I go, what? And I know that, that Bob is really the Lord of the universe. I just, I was shaky about it. You know, this all what's going to happen. Hey, he got the visa to go back to the, to the journey to the United States. So I had to go to the line again, go to the Mexicans. Three days pass by and I see a big, fat, big Iranian passport, the world with the little Greek passports. And there's the double and three visa to the U.S. Baba. Who can do that? That's why I remember it, I dare turn up for my lovers. Because you really care and you take over every detail. And it is our folly not to take the words to be truth because we're just humans and we don't understand the divine, especially some idiot like me, Mama. But right there, all my conviction, and you just, and since then I became like a rock as far as the conviction. Not even tell us, take buckets of bottles low. What are I was low and sprinkle it on you till you clean. Anyhow, so that happens. I'm so relieved. And we spent three days in Mexico just sightseeing and doing this and all of that. And, the, and then uh, Rafael goes to, the, to, to one of his homes you know, and all of that. And one day I'm happy now. And he says, uh, uh, Tony Grace, when I come running, yes, Alaba. And he goes like this This is the next Alaba. And he goes, What? This is, an, I'm going to be another Alaba? No, 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 no. Because he calls me that. And we spend a very pleasant day. But those words, you know, Alaba just says things sometimes, you know, but. I'm not going to be an alibi, that's for sure. I surely don't want it, Baba. Not even any extreme of it. In any case, time for departure, I think it's Thursday. Or Friday morning. So, alibi wants to go back to the Villa de Guadalupe early in the morning. So we go out of the Villa de Guadalupe and there's nobody there. Only about three people praying on one side and the lady on the other side. Who is she but Maria, the catechism teacher? I says, I never come to the Basilica de Guadalupe in the morning, but somehow they urge to come. Of course, they reintroduce themselves, you know, because all of us had a keen mind. And, the whole business, and then there went on the, the little private talk outside of the basilica. You know, we all walked out of the basilica then. And then uh, trying to leave. So what did I buy? I bought a little thing of water like this, which is a little jolty, uh, because it's made out of clay with all these beautiful picturings and all that. And I put it in a little box like this. No more. Getting ready to go to the airport, and you don't know what kind of stuff I've been through, man. It's been like one hall of a loo after the other. And he says, Tony Grace, what do you got there? I says, Well, I bought a little water jolty for my wife, Sandra. 
He says, now you're going to spend all your time concentrating on the joke and you're not going to look at me. And Baba, I exploded. So I started reaching for the jyoti. I started taking it out and my head all up on top of the head and Raphael said, it comes like this. Don't do that to me. Because I'm fed up of all this stuff that I've been going through. The stress, the liquor that I don't drink and I get drunk every damn night for a week or maybe more. And the, in, in, in all this stuff, it's just been like one thing after the other one. My nerves are shattered, so I'm going to hit him. So anyhow, I can't do that because Raphael stops him or else he would have, have a crackhead. What's good I do? If I can bring this with my wife, I can manage this. Anyhow, just exploded within. I'm not an explosive person, but I'm not, you know. I'm very patient and tolerant, so but that when I hit the ceiling. In any case, then all of us says, okay, you can bring that with you. But I am so angry, but we get in the airplane to our next destination. I don't even want to talk to Alava, and I don't want to talk to the rest of the journey. So what happens is that it goes like this grabs my arm and goes like this to my wrist. He put his hands and he goes, Shh, and everything disappears. I'm back to the normal guy. What happened to all that grudge? So on and so forth. Okay? So we go to uh, uh, Winnie Barrett. So I got a lot of people from Colorado. I didn't even know there was Buffalo was in Colorado. We had beautiful gatherings, and she played the piano at her house. And of course, we went to McDonald's and had her Baba meetings, and it was quite enjoyable because Colorado is a pretty nice place. We passed the time, and then we went to Los Angeles. And I had prearranged for Mark Palmer to fly in for Chicago and to make a uh, something feasible for uh, for him to to live on from Carol and uh, and, and her husband Kevin Kovalevitz in Chicago because I used to go to Chicago all the time with the Mandali with um, Bauji and this and that and all that. Now they're going by that. I need a break for more this a month and a half a big month of this stuff. So it had it had already prearranged by me. So we go to Los Angeles, and I'm so thrilled to that. And at first we visit all the Iranian community, and here comes all the pictures. He sits on the thing, and he, and he signs the signature every one of them. And he runs out of pictures, and he's got a bundle of money, and there's no way to get them printed, so he just has me photocopy them. And this continues and continues. It was fun. People buy 15, 20, 30 copies, all the Iranians. Because we stay at the Iranians for a couple of days, you know. And, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that happens. It was fun because he used to give us talks in Farsi and God knows what else. Now we headed out to uh, Los Angeles. And Mark Palmer flies from Chicago. And uh, so I'm going to break the news to Aloba. This is one of the last stories so you can get the laughter of your life. And uh, that we go to the, the Baba bookstore used to be somewhere in Santa Monica Boulevard, not in the old bookstores. It was a huge bookstore right over by the Mormon Temple, you know, somewhere over by the, some freeway and the beach after that, you know. In Santa Monica Boulevard, big big place at the Lee Stava. Normally yes, they had it, and uh, so I'm going to break the news. And so I says, "Alaba." I told Mark Palmer, "Be very careful before you, you know, do everything like this." And we told the instructions, and they go stay with the Copalabics. I'm almost through here. Now. So then uh, I tell Alaba very amiably. I says, Alaba, you know my family lives here, my mom. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time with my mom. And Mark Palmer is here. 
this is, you know, and he goes to India every year, you know. And um, and he's a good friend of mine, and he's very comic, because Mark Palmer is really a comedian. He made jokes about everything. He created some uh, fantasy of jokes that were just so adorable and precious, you know. And uh, so in any case, uh, Alaba looks at me, a little stern like this, and he yells towards all the people, and he says, Tony Grace, the connection is broken! <laughs> and I said, thank you, Baba, the connection is broken. So anyhow, he was talking to Dr. R. John and about three or four Iranis. So I get my taxi to Hollywood, California, and I put it right on as you go in. It used to be a holiday. I says, let me off in here. I gotta have a few drinks. I've been through much stress. And uh, I had bacteria because I was hiding from Alu, and I went in there. In those days, you could smoke inside, right? And I'm having three or four rum and cokes. Not switch see what the rum and coke tasted like. Then I went to my mom's. I go to sleep for about a half hour, and the phone rings. Ring, ring, ring. Who is it? The Bible that was from the center. That the police is there looking and searching for Alaba because he's disappeared. The police? Looking for Ali Akbar Shapur Sabad. He got lost in Chalab. What did he do? Walk off? Did Mark Palmer do his job properly? What the hell did I have to give him six hours worth of instructions for? I don't know what to do. So, take a nice shower, have about four cups of coffee, and we're going to go to Santa Monica Center. And then the phone rings again. We found them. But what, what happened? He went to, to, the Rajan's, uh, to Dr. Rajan's house with other Iranis, and he didn't tell anybody. So we panicked. So. <laughs> and I'll conclude this by saying, you know, he went to the Sufi center and destroyed a Sufi reoriented group. I wasn't there, but Bob was a witness. I'm sorry, but my brother died. So sometime back, with well, enjoying this smile, he says, "I already picked my next parents for my life, next life." Okay, humor personified instead of pain personified. He died of cancer. He didn't pay an analog because his father owned a paint company. In any case, what happens in Chicago? This concludes the session until I fly it back. Oh, Alaba just makes a hullabaloo, but I wasn't informed when I, that he told the Sufis how to reorient themselves and this and that, and there was a statue of this, and don't ever the, the worship the Murshed, you know, they're nothing, this battle is a real, and begins to put the, the Sufis not in their place, because they know what they're doing. They're very intelligent, very together, and very wonderful people. Then he goes to Shiva. Oh my God. Carol Kavalevic picked out a room in her house because she owned a three story house at the time in Chicago near the really neat place downtown. Somebody, because he was a fire chief, the husband, lieutenant for the fire department. General. And they painted it like all of us room. So Alaba would feel at home. And since they had they had the picture of Alaba. I mean, the one that he sold for seven rupees in those days, everybody bought one. And uh, and they had it decorated Alaba style. So he goes there and what does he do? Somebody else asked him to go out and spend the night. He never went to the Kabalebics. They had to follow Alaba to go to everywhere that he went to, but he never spent the day. After they painted the house, they put everything the way that he liked, uh, almost identical bed that he had, so he felt comfortable. He had a little, this, and, and never went to his house. 
Okay. So now, pick him up, go to India now. Flying over there to it. We get there, and then we arrive in Bombay, and there's about two, three hundred Baba lovers, because now we're going to the Patil Baba Center. So we go to Patil Baba Center. And all of everybody's greeting, all of us, so many cars following us, and all the, the truckloads of people, and people in glitches that took the way to the patio center, you know. And that's where he spent the night, too. Me, too. And uh, then in the morning, he's going to give a talk about America. But he needs a witness. And he says, Tony Grace! I'm on the back, I'll conclude this without, him, okay? The journey. And says, yes, Alaba. You got six minutes. Tell these people what happened to me in, in Mexico and how the people treated me and through our journey throughout the United States. Yes, Alaba. So I stand in front of the crowd. I says, I'm sorry, but I don't know how to begin because six minutes? How can I tell you of all the miraculous events? that happened with Alaba was there, the beautiful sightseeings, how much he was received in the center, and so, And in the meantime, I got to write to Mandali every week a, a letter explaining that everything was honky-dory, that nothing bad ever happened, and that Alaba obeyed the, the, the commandments or the orders to perfection. I got to cover Alaba now. Okay? So... That's what happens. So then all of a sudden I hear this hollering Tony Gris again. And all of us says, Tony Gris, because I'm explaining that I can't tell him this in six minutes. It takes me four or five minutes to tell him. And he says, unlimited time. <laughs> so like I love the room in the world. <laughs> And I began to tell him all the main events, and uh, I must have been there for two, three hours, man, describing everything that transpired, because somehow I got a keen memory. <laughs> and that was a blast that I have. Unlimited time, that's why I took advantage of it, man. I just rumble about the greatness of Mr. Ali Akbar and all of that, and this and that. And then going to Mirabai, so I deliver him safe and sound. I think it was a month of May. Mandali were very happy, but Alaba wasn't happy. He started crying for a week or two, remembering his journey. And then he said he was going to Australia next. And then he changed his mind and never went to travel again. Okay, that's his thing. And that concludes my journey with Alaba. Mr. Ali Akbar Shapur Sabat, which it was changes upon changes upon changes upon change. Oh, and I forgot to tell you one thing as we're going to the Via Guadalupe, the Gujarati article comes on the radio. And I think Rafael has put a CD in there. No, I don't think there was a guy in Mexico, Baba's Gujarati Sarti. And I said, Rafael, why did you put that thing in there? I said, no, no, Tony, just keep on the radio, the Gujarati Arti, how stupid I am that I forget that. In Mexico, on the radio station, Baba, and the radio wasn't even turned on? They speak and said the Gujarati Arti. What a mind blower, man. And that's the journey ended. <laughs>